sponsored by New Orleans Distillers, creators of fine spirits and liqueurs. Through dedication to science, art, and passion, blends of tradition and flavor emerge. For you, always locally crafted. New Orleans Distillers, classically Southern. Tonight, May's jobs report came out and we picked up 390,000 jobs last month. And that was good. Unemployment for May has stayed the same for the last three months at 3.6%. That's bad. And we'll be speaking to the former chairman of the SEC. We have that and more tonight on Friday, June 3rd, 2022. Hi, I'm Andre Laborde. Welcome to Wall Street Wrap Up on this Friday, June 3rd, 2022. I hope your week went well. Well, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released this morning May's jobs numbers, and last month we picked up an additional 390,000 jobs. It was a little better than expected, but the unemployment rate was a disappointing, staying at 3.6% for the third straight month, especially since employers around the country are needing employees. Well, last month for May, we picked up jobs in many sectors. The largest hirings were in leisure and hospitality with people heading to vacations or starting travel. But we did lose jobs last month in retail sector, dropping 61,000 jobs. And speaking of traveling, well, you may have gone out of town for the past weekend for the Memorial Day holidays. Last weekend officially started the summer, which means more people normally would be hitting the road on vacations. Well, this year it's gonna be interesting if they will be traveling more because of gas jumping this week now to its highest level. There are gas stations in Los Angeles right now with gas over $8 a gallon. AAA has the national average of gasoline now at $4.71 per gallon. That's an increase of almost 55% from one year ago. Well, coming up tonight, we're going to be talking with the former regulator of rules governing publicly traded companies. The former chairman of the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, will be here with us this evening. And Harvey Pitt. We'll be talking about insider trading and Elon Musk's war of words with the SEC. And do you, should you invest in cryptocurrencies? We'll be talking about the SEC's wanting to regulate the crypto market. Harvey Pitt, former chairman of the SEC, in just a moment. But first, how do the markets do this week? Well, all the markets were closed on Monday due to the Memorial Day holiday, so it was a shortened week. It was a choppy market, and then ending the week all on the negatives for that week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended at 32,898. It was down nine-tenths of a point for the week. And the S&P 500, they closed at 4,108, down 1.2% for the week. And the NASDAQ, they ended at 12,012, and that was down six-tenths of a point for the week. Well, let's get to our guest this evening. Harvey Pitt is the former chairman of the SEC, and he's right now the CEO of Calamara Partners. Best of all, he's here with us tonight. Hi, Harvey. Welcome to Wall Street Wrap-Up. It's good to be with you. We hear a lot about Section 230. And for our viewers, uh, Section 230 was, uh, you hear social media like Twitter and Facebook. Uh, this is sort of where they, they're not acting as a publisher, but because they're not acting as a publisher, they have immunity from any kind of liability because they're not uh, st stating what can and what can't be on their, on their sites. But I question because they actually are stating what can and what can't be on their sites. Are, are they upholding to the, to the regulations of Section 230? Well, I think the regulation uh, and the way it's been enforced is quite confused. I think what's really at stake here is the fact that people are using some of these websites for invidious purposes, and they are publishing false information and the like. And those are things that hurt all sorts of people, and they certainly hurt investors when it's done in that nature. So I believe that there has to be more clarity on how the provisions of that law work and are operating and enforced. Is the, the clarity has to be now be written, or has it been written, but it's just not being enforced? Well, I think it may be a little of both. Um, I think what we've seen 
uh, is that there are some gray areas and people uh, hide behind those. But in addition, I think the way it's being enforced has led to one-sided um, uh, disclosures at a time, and that is particularly troublesome. There are members of Congress that want to do away with Section 230 or restrict Section 230. Do you think that has some traction? That's more likely to happen now that Elon Musk has taken over Twitter. I think that uh, there are a lot of concerns on the part of people, uh, particularly um, uh, those who are in the more extreme um, uh, political uh, views uh, on both sides that um, Mr. Musk's takeover is not a good thing and they may want to clamp down more on what gets published on Twitter once he takes over. With a 50-50 a Senate and, and the House being so evenly divided and with a, a Democrat administration, do you think they can get anything? I mean, this would have to be approved by both members, both, both chambers of the, of the House and the Senate, and then be signed by the president. So I'm curious that if, if the Republicans would like something, the Democrats wouldn't want it, or vice versa, and then it would have to be then signed by the president. Or would this, could this be by executive order? I question whether it can be done by executive order, although um, uh, this administration and the last two administrations have been using executive orders um, far more liberally than I think they um, uh, actually allowed. One of the good things about this issue is that it has attracted bipartisan support. I think if you look at the recent hearings that have been held in Congress and the like, there is generally animus on both sides of the aisle against some of the big purveyors of social media. And I think that that could lead to legislation, uh, unlike many, many other areas where the polarization is just extreme. You had an interesting op-ed in the Wall Street Journal recently, and you were talking about the sophisticated investors and how the SEC, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, is sometimes overreaching their thoughts uh, and uh, not being able to let the sophisticated investor uh, do things that they may want to invest in. Do you think the SEC is overreaching their, uh, their main purpose and goals? They are. The SEC should not regulate funds that cater to the extremely wealthy. Those are individuals who invest over $5 million or businesses that invest over $25 million. The current proposals by the SEC, however, would um, treat that statutory prohibition as if it weren't in the statute. That is a, a concern that um, I think is um, uh, troublesome. Hedge funds, or we're talking about SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies, or um, other type of private equity. In this case, mm -hmm. about um, uh, private funds. SPACs are a whole different issue, and there the SEC um, has decided to um, uh, attempt to create a more level playing field when SPACs um, uh, disclose what their plans are and the like to make sure that investors get the truth. Goldman Sachs decided to uh, uh, not to stop then into their SPAC area where you, you invest in money and that they will then find a business to go ahead and buy that will then become public and not go through the IPO, the initial public offering process. They were, were stopping it because of the liability issue. Did you find or do you see that there's more of a liability issue? Uh, they can serve a very valuable purpose. But I think the way that um, SPACs have been uh, offered um, reflects the fact that people got greedy and they became careless. And uh, there I have to particularly question 
um, uh, the lawyers who have been involved. Disclosures have been made uh, that promise people the moon when there's no basis for that. Would something like this, would that be up to Gary, the present chairman, who's Gary Gensler, and the other board members of the SEC? Or would this have to be a, a process that would have to go through Congress? With respect to SPACs, the SEC may have sufficient authority to move forward. So I um, believe that there is authority on the part of the SEC and that the SEC can effectively create these kinds of conditions for people offering what are sort of uh, blank, uh, uh, blank check, pig in the poke uh, purchase uh, uh, situations. Private equity or uh, hedge funds or things that other investors that have certain uh, portfolios are able to invest in, but the regular investor, uh, the average guy on the street, would not be able to get into. Do you feel or do you see that possibly the SEC would be able to allow the average investor ways to being able to get involved in private equity or hedge funds? To allow um, uh, retail level investors into these vehicles, the question is, is that good policy? Um, uh, the whole um, framework of our securities markets is, if you tell people what the risks are and they accept them, then they uh, can move forward and the government is not supposed to substitute its judgment for those of people who want to invest money. With the private equity funds uh, right now, the SEC is saying, even if you make full disclosure, we're not going to allow certain types of relationships. Um, that, it strikes me, is well beyond the power of the SEC. I believe that that is beyond their current state of authority. There was a court case a while back, and I want to say it was um, Matrix Initiatives versus Siricano, Cir and I think I've got that right. And, but basically what it stated was, was that, that as long as you disclose information that they, and I think here's the key, a reasonable investor would be able to understand that they, he or she, would be able or should be able to um, invest in it. They, too, should be able to invest in the same kind of, of investment vehicles? Yes, the, um, the hypothetical would go like this, that I believe these securities are worthless, they're garbage, and that no rational person should actually <laughs> invest in them. <laughs> and if you're getting that disclosure, decide that you still want to invest in it, then the law has done all that it can do. When uh, Hertz was in bankruptcy, its stock was worthless, but people were starting to want to purchase uh, the bankruptcy shares of Hertz, and Hertz decided it was going to have an offering. And I had said at the time, this hypothetical has always been assumed. It just was thought that nobody would ever be stupid enough to actually make that disclosure, and no one would actually be <laughs> stupid enough to accept that disclosure and buy in. But it's buyer, um, you've been forewarned, and now you should do whatever you want to do, but don't come looking to anyone to protect you if you buy something people have told you is garbage. Gary Gensler, is, who is the, the new chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, is now uh, telling companies that they're going to have to be disclosing for climate change uh, greenhouse gas emissions. The SEC is to, and correct me if I'm wrong, is to protect the investor, is to regulate the capital markets, and also to let the markets flow as freely as possible. And if I've, if I've misstated that in any way, please correct me. But do you think with that, that 
by going now with climate change and greenhouse gas emissions that they've gone outside of their field? Um, the Biden administration has made climate change a major policy initiative. They are now directing companies as to what the level of their emission standards should be. The fact is that that power does reside in an administrative agency, but it is not the SEC. It's the Environmental Protection Agency. It is uh, poaching on the EPA's territory, and it is exceeding its own authority. We're so happy to have the former chairman of the SEC of the Securities Exchange Committee, Harvey Pitt. We've also, he's also partners with Cal Calorama Partners. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. And if you're just joining us, we're glad, glad to have your former chairman of the SEC, Harvey Pitt. When you're the chairman of the SEC, uh, do you have a, a working, on a normal circumstance, I guess, is it a working relationship with the secretary of the, of the, of the Treasury secretary that um, you kind of got a feeling of what he or she wants, uh, just how closely you work or not work with the Treasury secretary? The SEC is an independent regulatory agency, and that means that ultimately whatever decisions get made by the SEC have to be made independently. I met weekly uh, with the Treasury Secretary and the Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. We talked about a variety of issues that were going on. Uh, that cut across all agencies. We shared ideas, we shared thoughts, we shared initiatives. I would then come back from those meetings and tell the commissioners uh, what I had learned, what issues were uh, being raised, and then the SEC would make up its own mind as to how it wanted to handle a particular issue. If you own a, a percentage of a mutual fund, do you own the share of stock and stocks that the mutual fund holds, or does the company BlackRock, and I'm using BlackRock, but it could be Vanguard or others, do they actually are the owners of the shares and you just own a, a subset of that? Who actually is the owner of mutual fund shares? When I was chairman, we passed rules that required mutual funds to um, develop a policy on how they would vote securities uh, that were in their portfolio. This enabled the owners of the mutual fund to know what their management was doing on their behalf which I think is a very important principle, but it left the actual management of the portfolio to the professionals, which is why people invest in a mutual fund. Gary Gensler, the, for, the present chairman of the, of the SEC, is talking about cryptocurrency oversight is needed. First off, do you think cryptocurrencies are a is a security, and do you think that cryptocurrencies do need more oversight by the SEC? Cryptocurrencies are currencies, um, and currencies are not uh, usually securities, they're currencies. Um, that doesn't mean that interests in cryptocurrencies can't be offered in a manner that makes them securities, but it would depend on the individual um, uh, currency, how it's being sold to the public, what representations are made, and the like. What's clear is that there's a need for a governmental policy 
I don't believe that the SEC is the sole arbiter of these things. And when Mr. Gensler was chairman of the CFTC, I believe he thought the CFTC had jurisdiction over these issues. What I do believe is there's a need for the government to develop a uniform policy on cryptocurrencies and make those policies known so that people can get on with their business activities and comply with whatever rules will apply. Warren Buffett, who has Berkshire Hathaway, Jamie Dimon, who has um, um, J.P. Morgan Chase, they were stating that instead of the quarterly reports that publicly traded companies have to do, they should instead have to do, instead of quarterly, maybe do annual reports or maybe once every two years. And the reason they were saying it is because uh, CEOs, they said, felt under pressure to always make their next quarter and to always to come up with what analysts had predicted that their sales and their income should be on a per share of value. And then I think with COVID hitting, they, I haven't heard anything more about it. First off, do you think that, that there may be anything that may be coming of that, that instead of there be reporting on a quarterly basis, doing it on an annually basis only or a once uh, semi-annually or maybe once every two years? Actually, that idea goes in completely the wrong direction. Um, uh, we now have periodic reporting, which is um, important because it enables um, investors and shareholders to compare how a company is doing over comparable periods of time. Um, I believe periodic reporting is a fundamental building block of our system, and it shouldn't be changed. What should be changed is the fact that many companies make no disclosures of very significant matters until, in fact, the next quarter. And that, it seems to me, has created all sorts of possibilities for nefarious insider trading. Insiders know things, or people who are working with a company know things, mm -hmm. but um, the ordinary shareholder doesn't know a thing. And that has led to market movements before mergers or before discoveries or uh, before liability announcements, all of which hurt investors. So I believe there's more of a need to go to uh, current disclosure. I started that process and um, uh, the SEC uh, after I left, adopted many of the rules that I had proposed to get investors more information on a real-time basis. When the SEC makes a settlement with somebody, and what I'm thinking of is right now with Elon Musk, when he made the settlements with, with Tesla, and specifically when he said taking Tesla private at 420, um, that when you... And I'm not sure if they said if it was either implied or it has to be explicitly written in the settlement that they that the person making the settlement in this case, let's say it would be Elon Musk, would not be uh, would cannot disparage either the settlement or the SEC. First off, I'm curious: is that an implied or does that normally is that normally put in every settlement with the SEC? It's part of every settlement in which. Um, uh, the ones settling are uh, agree that for purposes of that settlement, they will neither admit nor deny the underlying allegations of the case. It leaves those people free in other litigation to deny the claims um, if, as a legal proposition, they don't want to um, be deemed to have admitted uh, the um, activities of which they were accused. Harvey, I've got a lot more questions. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I did too. Thank you.
Thanks a lot, Harvey. Well, if you've got a question about finance or a comment about the show, we would love to hear from you. Make it pithy, make it concise, and write us at Andre at WallStreetWrapUp.info. And now for a look ahead for market information for next week. But first, what was created by the government on this day in 1775 that has never gone away but only gotten larger? We'll have that answer in just a moment. Well, what was created by the government on this day in 1775 that they enjoyed doing so much that that's only gotten larger? The national debt. It was on this day, June 3rd, the country's first national debt was created today when a Continental Congress authorized debt of six million pounds of sterling to buy gunpowder. That's right. Well, the government enjoys being spending money so much that they've been doing it ever since for the last 247 years. Well, the city council, or their version of the Board of Supervisors of San Francisco, has now dr approved driverless taxis. Now, this will only be offered for the northwest portion of San Francisco and only from 10 p.m. at night until 6 a.m. in the morning. So this will be starting next year in 2023. Maybe you may want to stay out of that area during that time. Well, finally, if you've always wanted to buy Amazon stock but didn't have the $2,400 or so to buy just one share, now may be your chance. Starting on Monday, Amazon will be splitting their shares 20 to 1. Now, that means if you're already an Amazon stockholder, you'll be getting an additional 19 shares. Analysts say splitting the shares may really make no difference because you're not getting additional percentages of the company. But on average, companies that split their stock are normally up over 16 percent one year afterwards. So we'll see. Now, to put this as an example, it's a lot like the time they asked Yogi Berra, the, the former catcher of the New York Yankees, they asked Yogi if he'd like his pizza cut in fours or in eights. And he said, you better cut it in fours. I don't think I can eat all eight. Well, just like Yogi, you don't get more, you just get smaller bites. Well, coming up next week, we'll be talking with the founder and CEO of Case Capital, Kenny Polcari, with over $1 billion of assets under management and as in business for over 30 years, Kenny's seen many of these slowdowns and he'll give us his thoughts as to how much longer he thinks this bear market will last. You may have seen Kenny as a regular many times on both CNBC and Fox Business. Well, he'll be here next week. Kenny Polcari, that's next week, the founder and CEO of Case Capital on, on Wall Street Wrap Up. And as a reminder, we repeat the show on Sunday mornings. But the best way is to set your DVR so you'll never miss an episode. And that is our show for this Friday, June 3rd, 2022. Hope you've enjoyed it. My thanks so much to Harvey Pitt, former chairman of the SEC, for joining us this evening. But as always, it's you. We appreciate you for allowing us into your homes tonight. Remember, follow us always on social media, on Facebook and YouTube. Twitter, and WYES.org. So enjoy your weekend ahead. Have a great productive week as well. I'll see you next week. For Wall Street Wrap-Up, I'm Andre Laborde. Remember, money never sleeps. Good night. Sponsored by New Orleans Distillers, creators of fine spirits and liqueurs. Through dedication to science, art, and passion, blends of tradition and flavor emerge. For you, always locally crafted. New Orleans Distillers, classically Southern.